know, if you suspect that you might have zinc deficiency, uh, these are the things to look for. So we take a look at some of the different symptoms. One of the most common is loss of smell and loss of taste, really both being a problem. And really, you know, a lot of the receptors in your olfactory, your, your nose, they, they help you taste, right? So smell is actually taste when you look at the biochemistry and the science of it. So one of the things that's important to understand is that zinc is responsible for a lot of those neurological receptors of smell and taste. And so zinc deficiency oftentimes will make people um, not taste food as well. And here's, here's one of the problems. Let's say you have a zinc deficiency and you develop this loss of taste or smell. So what a lot of people do is they gravitate at this point to sugar and salt they, because they want to taste their food. And, and so a lot of the, the complaints of people with zinc deficiency are my food's too bland, I can't taste my food. And so what are they doing? They're gravitating towards salty and sweet. And salty and sweet generally means what? It means highly, highly processed. And so highly processed foods contain very, very little zinc, so you're not really solving the problem. And some of the medications actually designed, uh, designed to lower blood pressure, some of the medications designed to lower pain and inflammation causing deficiency. And that is one of the big problems is as you're trying to change your blood pressure with diet, you're taking a medicine that alters your taste that makes you want to eat more sugar and salt and processed food because you can't taste your food. And then that has the opposite effect of what the drug is trying to accomplish and you end up just chasing your tail. So um, got to keep in mind that loss of taste and smell, very, very important. I've had people actually uh, that I've seen come see me that, that were al almost completely loss of taste and smell, like very, very challenging for them. And with zinc deficiency was, was definitely a problem and correcting it led to a recapturing or regaining of those senses. So very, very common loss of smell, loss of taste. Um, those, those are super common. Now white spots on the nail bed white spots on the fingernails. I've got a few videos if you go back to my, uh, to my archives where we've talked about fingernail findings, common fingernail findings, and there's some really good pictures of some leukonychia or white spots on the nail beds that are, that are, are very good to look at if you're, try, if you're trying to imagine what I'm talking about. But if you look at the nail itself, just kind of thumbnails or fingernails, you're going to see like little tiny, almost like white splinters. You can't rub them off. Some people, sometimes when I find them, people come to see me, they say, oh no, that's just trauma. No, it's not. It's actually white ingrained in the nail bed. That's a very, very common symptom outwardly, openly of a zinc deficiency. So make sure, make sure you look at your nail beds. Now, a lot of times where we'll see this happen is after somebody has an alcohol binge, so they drink over the holidays, drink on the weekends, and that zinc deficiency can come on really, really quick because alcohol inhibits zinc absorption. It's actually a very, very common problem in alcoholic zinc deficiency. We can also get hair loss. So if you struggle with hair loss and you're having hair loss issues, and I'm not talking about autoimmune hair loss like alopecia areata where you're getting this big patchy-like hair loss on the scalp, you know, big numular, round, circular areas of complete hair loss. I'm talking about Hey, the hair is falling out too aggressively in the brush. Um, talking about the hair itself is not is, is thinner, it breaks easier. Like these are symptoms uh, you know, of zinc deficiency, not necessarily like, again, universal patchy-like hair loss, but kind of the weakening of the hair and the thinning of the hair more prone to zinc. Now, number four on this list are immune infections. So a person who is chronically sick, so chronic repeat, infections. So if you're the person that picks up every cold, every flu, if you're the person that, uh, that is constantly wondering whether or not you need to take an antibiotic, like those are the people who most likely have a zinc deficiency. Again, going back to what I said earlier, if you are, uh, if you are buying one of these immune support formulas, like these supplemental formulas, a lot of them contain zinc, and this is the reason why. Poor immune function is a side effect or symptom of zinc deficiency, and so chronic urinary tract infections, chronic uh, respiratory infections, those 
are, are big, big problems. A um, couple of questions that are already coming in. Uh, is taking too much zinc going to disrupt copper? Is there a zinc copper ratio? And the answer is yes. You can, if you are taking high doses of zinc over long periods of time, so what does that mean, high doses? So if you're taking 100 milligrams of zinc longer than a couple months, you need to start thinking about copper. And so if we're talking about the ratio of zinc to copper, ideally what the research says, if you don't want to cause a copper deficiency long term with zinc supplementation, that ratio is 7.5 to 1. So about 7.5 to 1. And that's zinc 7.5 to copper 1. Now some science, some research says that that ratio is like 10 to 1. And so again, if you're falling within that 7.5 to 1 or that 10 to 1, you should be okay and not creating a copper deficiency. But that really is, is only something you need to worry about if you're getting up over 100 milligrams for chronic periods of time. And you shouldn't have to get up over 100 milligrams of zinc on a daily basis from supplementation over chronic periods of time. Um, and if you are, you need to maybe have some tests done and have some other things looked at. Another symptom of zinc, skin inflammation. And so there are a number of different medical uh, conditions that are linked to zinc and there are a number of research studies that have linked zinc to creating things like eczema, psoriasis, or psoriatic, uh, psoriatic disease of the skin, the skin inflammation. There actually there's a genetic condition that some people, you know, they're born with it, it which leads to zinc deficiency. It's a type of skin inflammation as well, but skin inflammation. So if you've got unresolved psoriasis, if you've got unresolved um, if you've got unresolved eczema, you, you, know, you might want to look or have your doctor ask your doctor to measure your zinc levels and, and to have that looked at. Um, another symptom of zinc deficiency is trouble sleeping. Zinc plays a role in the biochemistry of some of your neurotransmitters. So difficulty sleeping might also be present for many people with zinc deficiency. Fertility problems, I mentioned this one earlier, but you're male or female, you can have Let's just draw us up here. So six, we said sleep issues. Number seven, we say for fertility issues. And again, this is male or female. You don't have to be, uh, you know, a lot of the fertility issues get blamed on women. But what I was saying earlier is zinc plays a role in sperm quality. So if you and your spouse or you and your loved one are trying to have children and you're not able to and you've been told you have unexplainable infertility issue, then it's, it's very important that both of you get checked for zinc deficiency because zinc plays a role in egg production and in the health of the egg, but zinc also plays a role in sperm motility and sperm viability. So there are different tests that, you know, that doctors can run. So let's say you have low levels of sperm. Let's say you have poor sperm motility and you have low sperm viability. Zinc can cause all three. So it's important that you know that because it may just be as simple as correcting uh, or, or supplementaling, or supplementaling, that's not even a word, supplementing zinc adequately. So again, fertility issues, male or female, can be a sign of zinc deficiency. Another one is irregular cycles or regular periods in women. So when I say irregular, I mean you're not on the 28-day cycle plan. You're on something other than, and that's because of zinc's regulatory capacity to regulate different sex steroids and hormones. In, in, in women, zinc plays a role in progesterone and estrogen. In men, it, it, it's necessary for testosterone production. You can't make testosterone without zinc. So a lot of men with low T, low T scores, that testosterone can be a major problem. Another thing that you, you, know, you might see on your, on your lab work when you go get your physical exams or checkups are low blood counts. What does that mean, low blood counts? That means a zinc deficiency can manifest as a low white blood cell count, a low red blood cell count, uh, or a low platelet count. So low blood counts can mean really a variety of any of those things. So if you've had that coming back repetitively on lab after lab after lab, it might be something that you want to do is ask, again, get with your doc and say, hey, look, maybe this is being caused by zinc. Can we run what my zinc levels are so that, again, we can get that corrected. Now, another very important symptom that's very common, especially today, and we're running low again here, um, is blood sugar problems. So if you've got blood sugar swings, up and down, hypo-hyperglycemia, 
Those blood sugar swings, remember that one of zinc's functions is it regulates insulin. And so, you, you know, if we look at what insulin is, insulin is this long protein, and it's made out of different amino acids, but in the very center of insulin, we have zinc holding it all together. Zinc is the center point, or the, the, think of it as the table centerpiece at Thanksgiving, right? It is the center point that holds insulin together. And so if you're low in zinc, and your body, or your body doesn't have adequate zinc, you could be producing an insulin that's less effective, and that can create an insulin sensitivity issue that can lead to blood sugar ups, downs, and swings. So if, you, if you're eating right, if you're exercising, and your blood sugars are still staying high, zinc deficiency may be part of the reason why. So those are the biggest symptoms of zinc deficiency. Some of those, um, let's talk about what can cause a zinc deficiency as well. I think that's really, that's an important topic. So now you kind of know what to look for, right? You know how to get it, you know how it's absorbed, you know what to look for, but what are the actual causes? What makes a person deficient in zinc? Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.